Hey guys, welcome back. For those of you that are new here, my name is Kobe and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be propagating a philodendron melanochrysum. Okay, so we're not going to be propagating this specific uh, Milano chrysum. This is my original Milano, but we do have another one down there that we're going to be uh, propagating in a second. But I just wanted to give you guys an update on this uh, Milano. As you can see right there, it's giving me a new leaf there. And it's also giving me another new leaf. I'm not sure if you guys can see it right there. But there's another new leaf that's popping up. And so far, this plant hasn't given me any hassles. It hasn't given me any issues or um, dieback. Um, the potting mix that I used for my Milano is the same potting soil recipe that I use for all my plants, but I just added um, another portion, an extra portion of orchid bark and just a little bit more perlite to make it a little bit more of a chunky area mix. And it seems to be loving that there. With watering this plant um i water this plant once every i want to say two weeks but sometimes i water this plant this plant like once every three weeks and i think because we were in our in our winter months and the soil was taking quite long to dry out um but i was just waiting for the soil to dry out completely and get a little bit of uh, get uh a little lighter and then i was giving it a good watering uh lighting with this plant i have this milano um in the corner of my room I'm just looking uh, at the corner where i keep this milano i have it in a corner of my wall that has a northeast uh, facing window right next to it and it's covered by a sheer curtain so it's getting bright indirect light um and it seems to be loving life there it's not a plant that will give you much hassles it's a really really easy plant to keep um and the leaves are just so sexy and velvety like absolutely crazy um, but yeah, this is my original Milano. We are going to be propagating, let me just leave this down one side and pull up the one that we are going to be propagating. We're going to be propagating, uh, this Milano right here. Now, the story behind this here was I got this from my friend, um, through a trade and the Milano wasn't doing as well. And then when we pulled it out of the soil, we noticed that for such a long plant, as you can see, there's not much of a root system to sustain this long vine because it had a lot more leaves on this uh, Milano stem, but it's just kept on losing the leaves and it hasn't been pushing out new growth. So about two weeks ago, I took it out of the soil, I washed up the roots and I popped it in a jar of water. And so far, look at what's happening there. It's giving me new growth there. And on the second stem, it's giving me new growth over there as well. So what I decided that I'm going to be doing with this Mulana, I'm going to be chopping it up because it's just looking too leggy. Like the spaces between the leaves are just too far apart. So I have one Milano that's doing amazing. So I just decided why not chop this plant up and make more Milanos. Um, so the plan here, I have two separate stems. So the plan that I have, well, I was going to be, I did get like a whole bunch of different uh, uh, potting media to propagate the Milanos. Like I got sphagnum moss, green moss, um, coconut husks, and perlite. And I was going to try those methods out, but I felt I didn't have enough experience in those propagation methods uh, to propagate the Milano. I will try those methods and do an experiment with that at another stage. Um, but for the Milano, I'm going to be sticking to my old trusted water propagation method. So what we're going to do here is with this cutting, as you can see, it's popping out from a previous cut. So what I want to do is I want to cut it like somewhere around there and then pop that into water. And then as you can see right here, it has another node that's right here. It has some dried aerial roots that are coming out and this part. I'm going to chop up the node and then I'm going to put that onto sphagnum moss and pop that into my propagation tank. And the rest of this that has some root on it, I'm going to put it in these mason jars with some perlite and some water at the bottom. 
Um, that's the one cutting, that's the one stem. The second stem has a bit more roots on it, but not as many. But with this plant, I can, I'm gonna be cutting it like somewhere there. If you guys can see, I'm gonna be cutting it like right there before this node and after this node, because I'm gonna be propagating this nodes into uh, sphagnum moss. And then I'm gonna be propagating this leaf right here. So I'm gonna be cutting it up right there. And then also with this one, I'm gonna be cutting it up right there. And then I'm gonna do the same with the base of the plant. I'm just gonna cut it off there and then stick the rest into a mason jar and put some perlite in it and then hope that it sends out another plant. Um, it's an experiment, so we'll see what happens. So let us go and chop this plant up. So, uh, let me see if it is recording, okay. So, okay, so with this first one, what I'm going to be doing is, as you can see right there, I want to chop it. Now, I did read something online um, that stated that it was telling me the differences between doing an angle cut and doing a straight cut. And apparently with like plants like roses and stuff, they need to be cut in, in an angle in order for it to absorb more water. But when you do a straight cut, it lessens the... The area of infection that how can I explain this um, if you do a straight cut there's less of an area for an infection to occur if you do it in an angle cut it makes the open wound much more larger of a surface area that can invite infection into it so I'm gonna be just doing straight cuts and not angle cuts on this and also make sure that you sterilize your scissors I'm gonna be using this sharp aquarium aquascaping uh, scissor and I've sprayed it down with methylated spirits and as I've stated before from what I've read online on Google and stuff methylated spirits is just uh, alcohol that is colored um, just to avoid syntaxes so it's the same thing as alcohol so I think I've been using it for quite a while now to sterilize stuff and it's been hasn't given me any problems so let us go we're gonna be cutting it, I'm not sure if you guys can see, but I'm gonna be cutting it right about there. So we've got one cutting and I've got these cute propagation uh, jars. It's got butterflies. But anyway, a jar is a jar and I'm just smelling this now and it's got like a very pungent smell when uh, when I just cut this. I think it's just releasing some stuff. But anyway, we're just going to pop this into some water. I think there's a bit too much of water in here. I'm going to pour it out. I did get this cool little small fish bowl to do a propagation, but I'm not going to use this because I think it's a bit too small to put one of these cuttings in. Like, Let's just check it out if it would do. But I think it would be a bit too small for this one. So we'll probably find another use for that. I'm going to pour some water out because I just want the edge of the roots to, to sit in water. I don't want the entire thing to, yeah. So that's about it there. I'm not sure if you guys can see through the butterflies. Uh, Trying to get a shot of this, but yeah, so just that part there is going to be sitting in water, and I'm going to pop this into my uh, propagation tank. And the propagation tank will just help keep in the humidity and keep in the warmth that will encourage the roots to actually push out. Um, so we've got one cutting of Milano, then if you check out. Let me just put on this other light that's on here so it can focus on what I'm showing you on screen. Okay, so we sorted out the lighting situation. Let's hope it shows now. But yeah, 
as you can see here from this leaf here there's some aerial roots that's there and there's this long stem so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna cut this off right about there where that aerial roots are cut. and we're gonna save this note because I can take two more I would want to take two more note cuttings because I'm noticing that if you guys can you guys see there's something that's shooting out like somewhere there so I'm thinking maybe another plant will start popping out from there but we'll sort this out later and with this Milano we're going to be taking maybe around about five centimeter of stem like somewhere around there so we cut that off and we have a, another cutting so I'm gonna pop this into water got another smaller jar that we're gonna just pop that into and there we have another one and let's leave that aside then now this kind of long stem that's here it doesn't have any nodes or anything of that sort on it so I'm guessing it's gonna be useless but I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna put it into sphagnum nonetheless just to see what may happen because you never know with nature it might just push out some roots it might just send out a, uh, another plant but I'm just gonna cut it there and keep it aside so let's keep that aside and this is the third leaf it's looking kind of shabby but the newer leaves will come out looking quite nice there's the node right there and we're gonna dip just give it a snip right there ah, kind of fell down but I'll pick it up now um, should we use this one yeah so we're gonna use this bottle and just pop that into there so as you can see you, do, you don't want the entire leaf stem to be submerged in water you just want to submerge the part where the node is into water and then we'll leave that aside. Let me get the original plant that kind of fell down. Okay. Okay, so with this part, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be making the stem a bit shorter and then popping this into the mason jar and filling it up with pre soaked perlite and hope for the best with this one. I'm going to be cutting it. If you guys can see right there, seems to be having like another shoot that wants to push out. So I'm going to cut just above that uh, node right there. So let's just give it a cut there. And we'll keep the stem. I'm not sure what's going to happen with this stem, but we'll just keep it aside. And we'll leave this in the mason jar for now until we fill it up with some perlite. Okay. Then with this cutting, as I showed you guys before, it started popping out from where it was last cut and propagated. So, um, assuming that I'm going to be taking, I could possibly take more cuttings from this because it does have like a longer stem, but I don't want to push my luck with this because it is sending out a new leaf and I don't want to upset that. So what we're going to do is right here by this node, I'm going to cut it about five centimeters below that node. So we got that and then we're going to pop this into, get some water out of here. We're going to pop that into water. Uh, I think it's going to be needing a little more water. I'm just going to pour some into there. I think it needs a little more. Okay, yeah, so the whole kind of node part, I'm not sure if you guys can see it through the butterflies, but it's submerged in water. And once again, I'll be placing this into my propagation tank just to keep in the humidity and the heat um, to help the plant root itself. Okay, and then with this stem, what I'm gonna be doing is, as you can see here, there's roots coming out of there and there's roots coming out of there. I'm not going to be cutting it into separate nodes. I don't know if I want to do that. Maybe we should just to do a small experiment. Maybe cut it off there where it's already developing roots and make one, two, 
put it into three cuttings instead of uh, just two. Mm. Should we? Okay. Let's just make this a bit shorter. Okay, right there. And then we're going to take this note cutting right there. So we got one note cutting there. And then make this a bit shorter as well. And we will cut it right there because there's roots coming out of that one. And so maybe we'll just cut it there. Keep that aside. And should we make this smaller? Let's make this shorter. Not the nieces of person. Sometimes I can be a little clumsy. But anyways, I've got this note cutting right there. So we're going to pop that into sphagnum and then hope for the best. Um, I was going to put the whole stem into perlite, but I'm thinking let's just do a little experiment and pop it into some sphagnum. And I'm sure that it would send out some sort of um, roots. Okay, so I have some pre-soaked perlite now when you're propagating in perlite i've been i've actually been speaking to one of my friends aeroid uh fairy uh jesse casper i'm i'm quite sure of the name this time jesse casper um she's been doing some amazing propagations with uh perlite and all that kind of stuff so she's been giving me amazing advice to uh start or get kind of the confidence that i need to start propagating in perlite. So I'm going to try it out with this note cutting and then see what happens with that there. Normally what she says is she fills up the mason jar or whatever container that you have. She fills it up and she plants it in perlite and she just puts a little um, nutrient water at the bottom of the cup, maybe I would say one fifth of the container and she just leaves it aside in a bright place that gets indirect light and hopefully it will start sending out some shoots. So let's get this planted up into some perlite and then we'll get that sorted out. So I've got a big container. Make sure that you um, make sure that you pre-wash your perlite because what I noticed when I started washing my perlite or soaking my perlite is that it had a lot of organic materials in it like small pieces of stone or dust or sand and you don't want that kind of stuff into your to put those kind of stuff into your propagation tanks um so i rinsed the perlite and i soaked it for about 20 minutes to an hour and then it seems to be fine that's what she told me to do so i'm going to be doing it i'm going to be following all her advice so i think what we want to do is first put some perlite at the bottom so that we now for those of you that don't know perlite is puff volcanic rock um, it's a very porous uh, type of material and it invites a lot of aeration and it also absorbs a lot of water it helps with the wicking so I'm going to be putting about that amount of perlite in there and then I'm going to be placing the cutting just on that and then I'll fill it up with perlite and add a bit of water. Now I don't have nutrient water so I'm just going to be using normal water for this and then I'm sure it will root. I'm contemplating using some of the water from my uh, aquariums but I think I remember reading somewhere that sometimes your aquarium water, if you don't do regular water changes, which I haven't been doing, uh, sometimes the nutrients in that water can be a little bit too high for the uh, plants, like the nitrogen levels can be a little bit too uh, high and could burn the roots. So I'm not going to try that. So we're just tapping this. Up. Yeah, so we're just going to be tapping this a bit just so that the roots and everything get covered and settled in okay just a little bit more okay. 
So we've got that kind of covered up. You can see some of the roots. So probably I'll notice whenever the new roots are starting to develop, then I'll probably notice it through the clear jar. But I think we're done for this part. Um, the next step. So what are we going to be doing next? Okay, so I'm thinking I've got these tiny containers. Where do I leave these things? Okay, yeah. I've got these containers here. This is from KFC. It's the mash and gravy containers. Um, so we always tend to recycle the plastic that uh, that we get from grocery stores or from fast food restaurants. Always try to recycle and reuse everything that we can. Um, every small bit counts in being more uh, environmentally friendly. Um, so yeah, we're gonna be taking this. Now I got sphagnum moss from the nursery and I soaked it in for about a day and then I just grabbed it and I squeezed it out a bit until I could just feel like a few drops of water coming out of the sphagnum moss. So it's kind of moist and after I did that, I fluffed it up a bit. Um, not a huge fan of using sphagnum moss and stuff. I feel kind of guilty whenever I use sphagnum moss because um, apparently they take quite a long time to grow and it's not a very sustainable industry. So I try to lean more onto coconut husk. That's why I'm going to be doing a experiment with sphagnum moss versus coconut husk versus um, perlite versus uh, lecker. So we're going to check which one actually roots uh, better. Oh, and I've also got green moss, which I think is Oregon moss. Um, they Sometimes they label it as sphagnum moss or sphagnum green moss, and it's not actually sphagnum green moss. It's just, um, from what I've read online, it's Oregon moss. Some people have told me that it's just a fake moss or... Um, let, me, let me show you guys what I'm talking about. But it is this type of moss that's here. And when I soaked it overnight, I kind of got like a very earthy um, smell. I think you, you'll notice the difference between a smell that is synthesized and a smell that is more on the natural earthy side. So I'm going to be also using this in one of my propagation videos. We'll do that experiment and see which method works better. I'm hoping that the other methods work better than the sphagnum. So we can start moving away from sphagnum and into more sustainable uh, resources. So we're just going to put some sphagnum moss there and then with these node cuttings I'm just going to take the node cuttings and just lay it on there and just press it gently in there and which is the other ones. Okay this one I actually forgot to sing. This is a long stem and it seems to have multiple nodes on it. These nodes seem a bit too close for me to cut it up smaller, but I'm just going to cut it up into two. So this is a node there, that's a node, that's a node, and that's a node. I'm just going to cut it right there. Yeah, probably around about there. And take just two segments. I would want to cut it more, but I'm thinking I shouldn't because I don't want this stem to not have enough energy to push out new growth. So we won't chance that. Maybe if it starts to root out and um, and to grow much more, then maybe we'll cut it up a bit more. But yeah, I've placed this three in the sphagnum. I'm gonna just mist it a little, and then I'm gonna place it into my propagation tank. And I'll show you guys my propagation tank in a bit. Um, where is another AC container? So, okay. so with okay, so with these two node cuttings, I'm not sure if I want to put it in sphagnum or uh, just put it in perlite. I'm thinking I should just put it in some pre-soaked perlite and then put it in my propagation box because I have noticed that a lot of people that use uh, sphagnum moss sometimes um rot occurs or infection starts taking over so i don't want to risk that there with something that's already rooted maybe i'll just put it in some in some perlite and pop it into my propagation tank 
So we'll just get some highlights. And with those roots here, I'm just gonna push it in and then bury the roots a bit. Um, yeah. I'm not sure which side this, which side I should put it in, but anyways, we'll put it in. This is how you should put it in, standing up a bit. Okay, and just tap that down a bit. And this one, I'm just gonna put the roots into this perlite. Perlite is kind of like a messy um, substrate because it always gets stuck in your hands and everything. But, yeah. Okay. So, we've got these two cuttings that one is placed flat and the roots are in the soil and the other one is just sticking up where the roots are in the perlite. We're going to pop this into my propagation tank just to keep the humidity in and see what happens from there. Okay, so this, with this cutting that we have in the mason jar, I'm gonna just fill it up with a bit of water. I think I'm gonna just put all this water in there and seems to be the right amount. So the water is coming just around there and whenever I notice the water is gonna be coming down, then I'm just gonna Keep on refilling it. I'm not going to use any nutrient water for now. Um, maybe I will eventually, when I do a water change on my fish tank, I'll probably use some of the fish tank water for my nutrient water. Okay, so, oh, and this, um, we're not going to be placing in my uh, propagation tank. We are going to be just placing it in a bright, in a bright area that's receiving indirect light, indirect bright light, and see what comes off this. Okay, so this is my propagation tank. Um, if you guys haven't seen uh, my video on propagation boxes and how to make your own propagation tank at a cheap and reasonable price, check that video out. Um, I will leave a link in the description below or I will leave it in the cards at the end of the video. Um, but yeah, with this, we're just gonna take each of these cuttings, well, this cutting and I'm just going to place it in there and the reason why I have like a thick layer of perlite at the bottom of the tank that's pre-soaked um, is just to increase the humidity in the tank I didn't want to have water where it's going to be swishing around and stuff so yeah I'm just going to place this in the tank just gonna move some perlite out today. Around there, I'll take this one, place it there. I think this one needs a bit more height on it instead of going into the ground. So, I think I'm just going to place it on the soil, just like that. And then, this one we're just going to place here. It's already got some height to it, and we'll place this one. Let's place it here. So, let's cover that there. And what I'm going to do with these um, these stems that I got here. Um, just got a bunch of these stems that are offcuts from the uh, Milano. They don't have any nodes on it or anything of the sort. What I am going to do is I'm going to place them on top of the uh, perlite and then we'll see what happens in the future. It might just take a few months, but it will be a cool experiment to see what happens with these, whether it will just rot away or 
um, where they will form new plants. So we're just going to place that there. And then the one that has the node cuttings that's just on the top with some sphagnum, we're going to just place this right here. And yeah, I think that's about it. And we're just going to close this tank. Okay, so now I'm going to be placing this um, propagation tank in a nice brightly lit area that's going to get indirect bright light and that's just going to help with um, increasing the heat inside this tank as well as increasing the humidity uh, combined with the pre-soaked perlite. And probably in the next two weeks or so or in the next month, I'll have enough roots to transfer these Milano and cuttings into soil or into Leka and then we'll take it from there. But I will give you guys an update of this, um, of this propagation. Okay, so I think that's about it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, I will be giving you guys updates over the next uh, few months on the Milano Chrysum cuttings as well as some of the other propagations that I've done. Um, but yeah, until next week, cheers guys. Oh, <laughs>